Thank you, everybody, for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm really excited to be in Paris for the first time. I'm excited to be presenting this topic to you. Uh, over the past several months, I've been busy testing out AMD GPUs to figure out you know, how well they run AI workloads. So I'm excited to be presenting Powering Your Generative AI Workloads with AMD and Open Source Rockam. Um, so yeah, uh, bear with me. I'm going to be talking a lot of tech specs. I'm going to be showing you guys some benchmarks. I'm going to get to nerd out a little. Uh, so uh, hopefully you'll employ, enjoy this presentation and uh, find it fairly useful. Uh, and again, we only have 30 minutes for this presentation. I've got a lot of content to cover, and I do want to get to questions. So uh, we're going to probably go fairly quickly. Um, but I'm also available at the end, outside. You guys can ask me questions if we don't get to answering all of them. But basically, the agenda we're going to be covering today is... Hold on, you guys can hear it. Um, is we're going to go over what is Rockham. Rockham is the open source software stack that powers AMD GPUs. Uh, then we're going to be talking about the different types of AMD GPUs, as well as the software compatibility. So this is basically you know, what runs well on AMD GPUs, what kinds of things don't run on AMD GPUs. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to be showing you guys some benchmarks and some comparisons. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to go through some demos. Thanks for everybody else who just showed up. Uh, so first, a little bit about myself. Um, no, I do not work for AMD. I actually work for a company called Source Group. Uh, there, I'm a lead consultant. And we're basically a, a, con a consulting or professional services organization of our part parent company, Amdocs. Uh, and we generally help large enterprises move their workloads to the cloud. I, myself, specialize in building out large data, ML, and generative AI platforms. Uh, and as such, I'm proficient in all three clouds, AWS, GCP, and Azure. Right now, my work has me working with a large US telco, uh, where I'm helping them build out a generative AI platform. And I have experience building out reg systems, model fine tuning, and model inference systems. Uh, and of course, I love learning, and I love teaching others. Uh, and I regularly attend conferences and give presentations like this, just so I can share my knowledge. So yeah, so moving on. First question, what actually is Rockham? And so Rockham is a collection of uh, software compilers, libraries, and, and runtimes that accelerate AI and math computation. Um, if you're thinking about CUDA, the actual AMD equivalent to CUDA is HIP. So HIP is like a C++ library, um, but it's really hard to program in HIP unless you understand like you know, multi-stream processors, warps, and threads. You generally don't want to be programming in HIP. Um, and thankfully, we do have the AMD software stack. So if you look at on the left side, you have at the very bottom the AMD Instinct and Radeon GPUs. Uh, and then you have this middle layer, which is the Rockham software stack. Uh, and that takes care of actually interfacing with the GPU. And then you have our favorite AI uh, frameworks. Like generally, if you're somebody that uses PyTorch, TensorFlow, or Jax, luckily the developer community at PyTorch, at companies like Hugging Face, work with Rockham so that you don't have to, uh, to make everything work seamlessly. And you'll see over the course of my presentation and my demos, for the most part, everything does work really well on AMD GPUs. Um, and there is a link over there. I'll be sharing the slides afterwards. So if you guys want to check out and learn more about Rockham, you definitely can. Uh, but yeah, let's get to stuff that I love, the actual hardware itself, the AMD uh, GPUs. Um, so there's really two different types of AMD GPUs. Um, there is also the Ryzen AI new CPUs that have just been announced at Computex that kind of run on MPUs. We won't really have time to talk about those, but really there's two classes of GPUs. You have the server or instinct class GPUs, which run on the CDNA architecture. And then you have the Radeon and Radeon Pro GPUs, which run on RDNA 3. Uh, you'll sometimes hear this referred to as Navi 3. And you'll see with the software support, depending on what architecture you're running, you'll find things work or don't work. Um, and of course, Probably the, the GPUs that are getting the most hype right now are the MI300X. Those are really cool GPUs. That they're kind of like a, a GPU die that you see in this picture over here. Um, and you either have air cooling or water cooling, but they can run and they can pretty much compete hand in hand with the NVIDIA H100s. Uh, the GPUs that you guys are probably more familiar with are you know, the gamer or consumer glass GPUs. Those are the 7900 XT, XTX, and also the GRE. Um, those are supported on Rockham. And then, of course, you have the Radeon Pro GPUs. Uh, the one I personally own, I'm lucky enough to own the W7900, which is this GPU over there. Um, and that one comes with 48 gigabytes of VRAM, so you can pretty much load all kinds of models, even the largest 70B models on the GPU. 
Um, but yeah, I'll feel free to look at these later to kind of look at, you know, the most important deciding factor aside from cost on these GPUs is really the amount of VRAM that you get. So depending on what workloads you want to run, but it's safe to say you can also have multiple GPUs in the same system to support larger workloads. Ah, so now it's software compatibility. This might be a pretty daunting uh, slide. I was trying to pack all the information, all my you know, months of testing into one slide. So if you take anything away from this slide, the first thing to know is just if you're working with model inference, the best tool to use is actually Olama. Olama runs a Llama CPP on the back end, and it fully supports Windows and Linux. So it works right out of the box. It's super simple to install. When it comes to model fine tuning, I highly suggest you look at TorchTune. TorchTune is a new library that was published by PyTorch, but that as well also fully supports all the different uh, Radeon, Radeon Pro, and AMD Instinct GPUs. Um, and for, for things that you're most familiar with, PyTorch and TensorFlow, they, of course, work out of the box. The only thing being is that with PyTorch currently, you have to be on Linux. So that generally is Ubuntu 22.04 or Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Suzy Linux Enterprise. Um, and TensorFlow works. Just a note on these slides, the things that I have here in yellow are things I didn't actually test myself. This is from the developer community. People have reported things like with Xformers or Unsloth, they don't actually work on the Radeon Pro or Radeon GPUs. TensorFlow should be fully supported, but I'm not a TensorFlow user, so I didn't get a chance to test it out. Uh, and then, of course, you have the Transformers library and text generation inference. Um, I'm happy to report that fully works on all of the radi uh, AMD GPUs, the Radeon Pro, uh, Radeon, and Instinct GPUs that I have listed over there. Uh, thankfully, the people at Hugging Face have been working really hard on getting the Transformers library to work on AMD using the Optimum AMD library. Um, and if you follow their Hugging Cast episode, they recently released one on YouTube where they kind of go through uh, text generation inference running on the MI300X GPU. So you could definitely watch that. Um, On to the things that aren't so great, if you look at these kind of meh faces over here. Um, when it comes to things like flash attention, of course, the Instinct GPUs fully support flash attention. That's from inference and also model training. Um, and rightly so, of course, AMD's engineers are focusing on their Instinct GPUs. That's their enterprise class GPUs. They probably make the most money or the most revenue from their enterprise customers ordering thousands of GPUs. So it makes sense that they would fully support it there. But when it comes to the Radeon GPUs, what I found is that um, although the Radeon GPUs lack the CK composable kernel libraries to run flash attention, AMD has started supporting flash attention using Triton, OpenAI's Triton flash attention. But as much as the AMD engineers are adamant that it actually does work, in my testing, it was a real hassle to get them flash attention to work. Uh, and when I did test it out with something like VLLM, unfortunately, I didn't really notice you know, the 2x speed up that you generally get from an NVIDIA or Instinct GPU using VLLM. I went from running Llama 370B at like uh, 13 and a half tokens per second up to 15. So although it was a speed improvement, definitely I don't think it's working as it should. But hopefully as more and more people get their hands on AMD GPUs, uh, especially if there's a developer that's proficient in Triton, we'll get better support. Um, and, and likewise with bits and bytes, it does work on Instinct GPUs, but I found that running into errors constantly on the Radeon and Radeon Pro GPUs. So still developers, there are open PRs for this and they're still working on getting it fixed. Um, yeah. And just something that actually came about this morning, uh, AMD dropped a video on their YouTube, basically explaining that the newest version of Rock M 6.1 now does support uh, WSL Linux on Windows. Uh, that's really awesome to see because we're going to probably move very soon to actually getting PyTorch on Rock M working on Windows. Uh, and I hope that kind of goes to show you guys the, the kind of effort that's being put behind this. The AMD engineers and the wider developer community is working really hard to get uh, AI workloads running on GPUs. Okay. Uh, and then I just want to go over some tips. Uh, there was a lot of pain and anguish when I first started out trying to work on AMD GPUs. I do admit maybe sometimes the documentation isn't the greatest. Um, but here are some tips we'll just quickly go over that will really save you some trouble uh, when you're trying to get AMD GPUs to work. Uh, first one being is if you have a GPU that's not supported, let's say, for example, um, anybody here who has a Steam Deck, I have a Steam Deck. Um, the Steam Deck itself is actually running a custom APU. Uh, it's not on the official supported list. 
this, but AMD has an environment variable here called HSA GFX version override. So in order to get your unsupported GPU to work, uh, you can just go to this link right here. Um, and we know that, the, for example, the Steam Deck is an APU that supports RDNA 2, or it's the RDNA 2 architecture. So to get it working, you just go to this list here. You find something that has the RDNA 2 architecture. Um, we have it right here. So you've got a, uh, this one. And the GFX version for that is 1030. Uh, so that way, in order to get it working, you would just set your GFX version override to 10.3.0, and then you'll get PyTorch to actually recognize and be able to use the APU. Uh, so that's a cool thing to note when you start working with Radeon GPUs. You'll see that mentioned quite a while, even with stable diffusion. Um, and then the other really important one is the second point. Um, if you're working with the multi-GPU system, specifically Radeon GPUs, uh, I kind of toiled with this a lot. I had some GPUs that I borrowed from a friend to go with the GPU I already had, but things weren't working. Things weren't looking too great. Um, when it came to fine-tuning, you know, the model would get loaded on the GPUs, but then it would just stay there. There would be like nothing happening. Um, and then with inference, I got Olama to work, but it would just generate gibberish text. And I was like getting really frustrated. I had access to another multi-GPU system from AMD. That was working perfectly fine. And I was like, what's wrong with my, my GPUs? I was almost banging my head at the keyboard at, at that point. But there actually is a little known issue with uh, distributed data parallel on PyTorch. Um, and the engineers at AMD kind of have this little footnote at the very bottom of their install page. But basically, in order to get multi-GPU to work, you have to go in and you have to add this line right here. So you basically have to change the IOMMU setting in your grub. You restart your system, and then everything works beautifully. Like, I can't explain. When I got this working, I was like jumping for joy. I was like, I have these expensive GPUs. They're not doing anything. This sucks. After implementing this, they work beautifully. And you'll see that in my demos. Uh, Multi-GPU is, is fully working, which is really good to see. Again, apologies. I kind of am going really fast. I just want to get the time going. Um, other couple things. Uh, if you're working with TorchTune, definitely check it out for fine tuning. But if you want it to support BF16 or Brain Floating Point 16 precision, uh, you do need to install the nightly version of TorchTune. Uh, and that's because there have fixes that have been implemented to get it working. Previously, it would be checking a CUDA version to see if your CPU or sorry, your GPU supports uh, BF16. Of course, Rockem doesn't have that same CUDA flag. Uh, so it's been fixed, but not in the standard version. So install the nightly version. It'll save you a huge headache. Um, and lastly, when it comes to Kubernetes support, AMD GPUs work fully on Kubernetes. The only thing you have to do is you have to install uh, the Rockem K8 device plugin. It's a Kubernetes daemon, similar to how you get NVIDIA GPUs working on a cluster. You just go in, you apply this uh, YAML configuration file. It's a one-liner in kubectl, and then you get your AMD GPUs recognized on the system. So I wanted to show you a demo of that. Didn't get a chance to, but uh, meet me later if you want to talk Kubernetes. Uh, now, finally, we get to my favorite part, the benchmarks. Um, originally, when I was thinking about getting an AMD GPU for running AI, I looked online, and there was literally like no benchmarks on how well the AMD GPUs run. And this led me to believe, and probably leads a lot of people to believe, that either AMD GPUs just don't work with AI workloads, or that they don't work very well because nobody's talking about them. Well, I'm here <laughs> to be talking about them and spreading the word that, yes, you can run, especially with model inference, a whole bunch of GPUs, and they actually run really well. Um, so of the GPUs that I had access to, I had access to a Radeon 7900 XTX, a W7900, and also the MI210 Instinct GPU. Um, I was trying to find an NVIDIA GPU to compare, just so you guys kind of get a sense of uh, you know, how well they perform. And I kind of ultimately settled on the A100 for two reasons. A, because they're readily available and not too expensive on GCP, but also B, because it would be unfair for me to compare these GPUs to an H100. If you're looking at, you know, if you're a large enterprise customer looking at H100, you really should be considering the MI300X. That's really the equivalent, and I, I believe it performs slightly better. Um, but for this general purposes, I looked at the A100 to compare. And as you can see from these charts here, um, I should mention all the models that I'm testing, I'm using Olama. Um, Olama, generally their models are the 4-bit quantized version of the model. 
Um, and of course, even though you know we're not really testing accuracy here, what's really the bottleneck, it comes down to the size, the actual file size for your model. So I've kind of listed the file sizes all the way at the bottom here. You've got the smallest model, which is a 5.3 at 3.8 gigabytes, all the way up to the largest model, which you'll see in the next slide, the Falcon 180B model, which is around 100 gigs. And that will kind of predict, depending on the model size, regardless of you know whether it's half precision, full precision, or quantize, that'll determine your token speed. Um, from my findings, what I found was that um, the 7900XTX and the MI210 actually were very comparable to the A100. They kind of ran at 90% of an A100, which is really good considering the price and the you know, power efficiency difference from the GPUs. The one caveat being is as you get to these much larger models over at the end, you can see with the poor 7900XTX, the model performance actually kind of tanks, and that's because the model size is actually too big to fit on VRAM. So Olama does a good job of offloading the layers that don't fit on VRAM onto CPU, but clearly you can see there's a huge difference um, with the 7900XTX on the larger models. Um, lastly, I, I should mention also, over here, I don't have a number for the MI210 on the larger Lama 70B model. It's not because it can't run the model, it's only because the cloud platform I was using, there's a bug on the platform where anytime you load a large model, it would, the container would just crap out. So I've kind of estimated the, the container. I've been very conservative here. As you get to the larger model size, the AMD GPU performance kind of drops down to about 75% the performance of an A100, but still very respectable considering what you get and the price you get them for. And again, these slides and the presentation will be available online, so you don't have to really, uh, you can refer to these after. Um, again, with multi-GPU inference, it's fully supported. And here you can see I have on the right, uh, four, three different types of GPUs, all running four GPU in a four GPU cluster or four GPU system. And you can see with the DBRX model, which is a model that's 74 gigabytes, the W7900 and the MI Instinct uh, 210 still run very respectively compared to the A100. Um, I should note one interesting thing that I found was regardless of how many GPUs you throw at a model, if the model can fit on two GPUs, for example, uh, in the case of the W7900, you still get the same tokens per second as if you had four GPUs. So if you test the DBRX on two GPUs, uh, it runs at 20 tokens per second. If you add two more GPUs, it's still going to run at 20, to 20 tokens per second. Uh, it seems to be like an inherent speed limit, really, and, it, and that's just how it is. So you can't really accelerate a model. If you wanted faster inference, that's when you have to move up to more powerful GPUs. Uh, and again, there's a missing uh, metric here. That's because of that bug. I, I can't really show you the performance of the 210 MI210s, but um, pretty cool. Uh, and then overall, this is the overall average that I found. Um, again, the caveat being with the RX 7900, while it does match an A100 in performance, as soon as you get to the larger models like uh, Mixtral and Lama 370B, it drops way down. The other interesting thing I found, if I go back up to my metrics, which I'll do just in a slight bit. Um, I did a compare a CPU like the Threadripper Pro 5975WX. Uh, originally, I thought, okay, I can get a really big CPU, load it with a lot of system RAM, and even though you know it's uh, not going to run large models very well, at least it will run the model, um, and you know I could do my research, my experimentation on that. But I actually found out in my testing that if you're thinking about running really large models, you can't afford a really expensive. GPU with a lot of VRAM, you're actually better off getting a 7900 XTX and then a uh, you know, consumer CPU like the 7900 XT. Um, and you actually end up beating out the more expensive Threadripper CPU. So here you can see in these numbers on Mixtral and Lavo 70B, you know, pairing a GPU with a lower end CPU actually does outperform a really high end CPU like the Threadripper Pro with 64 threads. Uh, I think that's enough of the benchmarks there. If you guys are wondering, what does that actually feel like? I'll show you. I've got a demo here. This is the 7900, W7900, running a whole range of different models. Give me a second to just play all of these. And, and you'll see, for the most part, uh, especially if you're just a single user uh, AI startup or an AI researcher or developer, um, this GPU actually handles the models really well. And anything that's above, I would say, like 20 tokens per second, 
is that last one running, uh, is more than enough. Like you can't really read faster than 20 tokens per second. The only you know, time you start noticing the speed difference is at the bottom left-hand corner. If you look at Llama 370B, you know, that 13 tokens per second, you're starting to notice a little bit of a slowdown. And of course, with very large models, this is running on three W7900s, the Falcon 180B. Normally, you wouldn't be using Falcon 180B. It's an old, outdated model. But I just wanted to show you something that's a really large model size. That six tokens per second is kind of starting to affect the user experience. But for the most part, you know, a lot of models run really well, and they run really fast. So hopefully, this kind of puts into perspective you know, the actual number in the benchmark and the actual performance that you visually see. Uh, On to some fine-tuning benchmarks. So again, this is TorchTune. TorchTune is an awesome library. Basically, in TorchTune, you load a recipe or a config, um, and you target you know, the number of GPUs, either distributed or just a single device. Uh, and then you can do fine-tuning, and it's that simple. Um, you can see with the single W7900, it's a GPU, again, with 48 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, if you only have a single GPU, you can't really do full fine-tuning on Llama 3 uh, 8B. Um, but you can do LoRa fine-tuning. And from my testing, I kind of saw that uh, with a single GPU, the best batch size to use is a batch size of two. And you can do fine-tuning in five and a half hours, which is still pretty respectable for a single GPU. As you get up to multiple GPUs, like two or four GPUs, that's when you can actually increase the batch size. And you can get the fine-tuning all the way down to an hour, actually under two hours with four W7900s. Um, and just to compare that with, I'll come back to the other slide, but to compare that with the MI210, as I explained before, the MI210 ha has access to 300 watts compared to the 240 watts that the W7900 has, and as well, it does support flash attention. So you'll see a, a much bigger difference when it comes to fine tuning. With a single uh, MI210, you can get the fine tuning down to four hours, and then with four of them, you can actually get the fine tuning down under an hour. So that's pretty awesome. The other thing I should mention, I was kind of late to the party when it came to torch.compile. You heard uh, Sumith kind of talk about it in the PyTorch 2.0 release. Um, but I found that if you actually set a flag saying torch compile equals true, um, you can notice an even further speed increase, up to 20%. Um, so yesterday I found this out, and I could have spent the whole day you know, rerunning all these benchmarks, or I could have gone and visited all the cool sites in Paris. And you can kind of guess which one I chose. <laughs> Paris is a beautiful city. But this morning, I did do just a single test to, to prove you know, how good the speed up is. And if we go back to that first slide, when I was running on a LoRa fine tuning on a single W7900, we were about five and a half hours. Um, if I, in the config, actually list compile equals true, uh, I ran the initial test this morning, and it actually went down to four hours and 52 minutes. So that's a significant speed up. And again, um, it really makes it possible for you to do fine tuning on a single GPU at home. You know, so it's pretty cool. Or if you're a startup and can't afford the more expensive GPUs. So we'll skip that. Finally, I think we're good for time. So I'm going to show you guys some demos. These are pre-recorded demos just because, again, in the interest of time, uh, I want to show you kind of what is possible. Um, and I really tried to get demos that kind of work on every single GPU type. So the first demo I'm going to be showcasing is running a local code assistant on the Radeon 7900 XTX. So for some of you who are gamers, you might have an AMD GPU running. Uh, just know this works really well on the Radeon GPUs. So I'm just going to hit play here. So you can see here, this is a Windows system. Because Olama works on Windows, you're perfectly well to do this. You have the task manager on the right-hand side. Uh, and you see the 7900 XTX. Um, and what I'm using is actually Code GPT. It's a VS Code plugin that's free to use. There is a paid version, but you're fine with just using the, the free version. Um, you can actually use Olama on the back end to select whatever model. In this case, we're using Llama 3 Instruct. Uh, and then I'm asking the, the code assistant to say, write me a Python function that calculates someone's age based on their date of birth. Uh, and you can see as I hit uh, uh, enter, uh, you'll see a little spike kind of show up. The model gets loaded, so the VRAM, we're about 9 gigs right now. And you can see it generated the code for me. So this is pretty cool. This is running a local model code assistant without the use of something like GitHub Copilot. You know, you can keep the code on your machine, and there you go. You have the code. works perfectly fine. Um, in this case, I'm also trying. I'm, I'm asking it to update the function only because I want to run this as a script to make sure it actually works. So I'm saying update the function to prop the user for a date of birth so that when I run the script, I can just give it a date, and then it gives me an answer. So 
Again, once again, you hit generate. Because we're using an AP model, it happens really quickly. I can copy, paste it over there, and then I'll open up the terminal and run it. But again, this is a very real use case. Sorry about that. I think something is crapping out. Uh, OK. Did that work? OK. I don't know what to the video there. Um, but yeah, so I'm running the script right now. And this is a very real use case. If you're a developer and you want to use AI to help you code, uh, you can do this right now with an AMD GPU at home. So there you go. I entered the date 1990, uh, January 1st. And then it gives you an answer. Your age is 34. So again, really cool to see that we've got AMD GPUs running open source or open weight models on Windows. Uh, next, we have, uh, again, this is a pretty cool demo. So if you have a GPU with a large amount of VRAM, like my W7900, um, there is actually in Olama a little environment variable at the very bottom, Olama max loaded models. So you can actually set this number so that you can load multiple models on a single GPU. Uh, and let's see what that looks like. So here I'm running Ubuntu. I've got NVTOP, which is kind of a graphical user interface that shows you your GPU usage. Um, and I'm running two models now. I'm running Llama 3 Instruct and Phi 314B. You can see I've got about 14 gigs of uh, mem models loaded in VRAM. And I can ask the same question on both models. And you do get generation both at the same time. Of course, this is a lot slower than running just the single model. Uh, but where I find this is really useful, let's say you're an AI developer or researcher, and you kind of want to figure out what is the best model for your use case. Well, what you can do is you can actually load multiple models, ask it the same question. Like right here, I'm actually adding a third model. Um, so let me just load. I think I'm going to check uh, Lama 2 chat. So here you can say, OK, ask the same question on all three models. And you hit Run. And then you can evaluate which is the best performing model. So that's a, a pretty cool use case that is possible on AMD GPUs, just like they are on NVIDIA GPUs. Um, and the other thing I found, which is pretty curious, is when you are running on multiple models on the same GPU, the first model that you ask the question to gets the most performance. And then the the later models kind of are a lot slower. So you'll see here, I think I hit enter first on the Llama 2 window. And you'll see it goes much faster than the other two. I guess in the background, AMD or Rockham is doing some, or Olama, Llama CPP is doing some kind of cool scheduling and kind of determining which one uh, gets uh, the access to the GPU the most. So you can see, again, running multiple models. We're still only at 20 gigabytes of VRAM, so you plenty more room to add even more models. But again, a really cool use case. And then we're going to go, yes, I do have time for one more. And this is using TorchTune. Um, this is a fine tuning library, like I mentioned. So again, here, if you follow the TorchTune documentation, this is just a standard tutorial documentation for fine tuning Llama 3 8B. Uh, we're fine tuning it on the Alpaca data set in this example with a batch size of 12. Uh, using the Atom Optimizer. The other cool thing is you can actually update the logging. You can see it kind of over here where I'm logging everything to weights and biases. So you can create a weights and bias account, get an API key, log in, and then all you have to do is run torch run. Here, because I have multiple GPUs, I'm setting n proc per node to four because I want it running on all four GPUs. Uh, and then I would say just do a full fine tune. In this case, we're not doing a lot of fine tuning. Uh, and then I specify the config file, and then off it goes. Uh, the cool thing is it doesn't take, even with a single GPU, it's fairly quick with loading the models. And then, like I mentioned, you can also enable that torch compile uh, to get even faster fine tuning. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And you'll see that in a sec, just to prove that, yes, you can use multiple GPUs. It does work. After putting in that fix that I was talking about, uh, you'll see here uh, as I run. The other thing, again, I should note, because this is a Radeon GPU, you will get a warning specifying that you're not using memory efficient uh, attention. And that's because, again, of that flash attention support. The backwards pass is not supported right now on Radeon GPUs. But with four GPUs, you still get a very respectable, I think it's going to take about two hours to do the fine tuning, which, again, is wild. Like when I first started out with fine tuning last year when uh, Sanford you know, published their fine tuning code for Alpaca data set. I remember renting out an A100 doing a fine tuning and it like took eight or 16 hours. And I would like run it overnight, wake up, you know, every two hours and just peek at my screen and be like, is it still running? Is it still running? But now just having it run, you know, with one GPU in under five hours or with multiple GPUs, you know, in under two or one hours, it's just wild. It's, it's pretty cool that you can do this at home. Uh, and I think I'm going to just jump over to Weights and Bias. You can see when you ran Torch Tune, you do get a link to your Weights and Bias account. And if I just quickly open that up, 
Uh, this is just some other fine-tuning stuff that I ran previously. If I just paste that in, you can see this is actually, so it's logging metrics directly to weights and bytes, which is usually what you want to kind of see how well you're run on. You can calculate the loss. Of course, you can have like better charts up there. The other cool thing is if you go into the config, TorchTune does push all the config up to weights and biases, so you can kind of keep track of like things like what was the batch size you use, what was the learning rate, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think that's about it for time. Um, the last thing I did want to mention, since I'm almost over, is um, you know the thing I want to get across is with more choices on the GPUs you can use leads to more possibilities, especially you know on the low end where you know you can't quite afford or have get available the NVIDIA GPUs. You can still use AMD GPUs, and I'm happy to report at Computex the two-slot blower style GPUs are making a comeback. So AMD did release their W7900 dual-slot cards, and that's what you saw in that system that I was just showing you. Basically, you can stack because they only take up two slots. You can stack four GPUs into a system quite nicely, and then you've got companies like ASRock, which are going even beyond that. So they've actually taken the Radeon W70, I mean, the Radeon 7900 XTX, turned it into this blower style form factor, and then they've packed the server with like eight GPUs, and this works as well, which is pretty cool. So, you know, as a startup or, you know, just an AI enthusiast, you can buy a single GPU, and then as you get more money, kind of buy a second one, a third one, and as soon as these things hit the used market, you could probably, you know, use them at a much cheaper cost. But... Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have time for questions, but I hope you guys enjoyed kind of my quick run through of AMD uh, running AI workloads on AMD GPUs. Again, messaging is AI models run really well on AMD GPUs, just like NVIDIA. They don't quite match the performance of NVIDIA GPUs in, in most cases, but you know, eventually with more software support. Again, I want to shout out the AMD engineers, the engineers at PyTorch, at Hugging Face, and you know, Olama and Lama CPP for their hard work in trying to get all this stuff supported. Um, and as we have more development in open source, we will hopefully have better performance on the GPUs. Uh, thank you again for everything. <laughs> Hope you guys got a lot out of it. And then again, I'm available outside if you guys have questions or if you want to see some more demos. Uh, I have a few more demos I could show you guys. Thank you.